Kluwer Media's Mining Weekly is interviewing Natasha Fulun, the outgoing CEO of Anglo-American Platinum, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange-listed Platinum Group Metals Company, which has just declared a 3 billion rand first half dividend. Hi, Natasha. It's great to chat to you. What gives you the most confidence about Anglo-American Platinum as you prepare to hand over to your successor in the near future? I think there's probably three things that come to mind. The first thing is our world-class assets. We undoubtedly have the best mining assets, long life, and importantly, also integrated end-to-end with um, our downstream processing. We know it's an important access to the market, but more importantly, other than the assets, also the knowledge base that we have, which brings me to the second portion of it. It is our people. The skills and the knowledge and understanding of this, the teams of people in this organization, all the way from the rock tool operator, the operator, the manager, all the way into our senior team. Many of these people have been hand selected to be part of an extraordinary team. And we have the skills and knowledge, not only from the detailed technical understanding of the platinum value chain, but also how we operate in a very complex environment that we operate in. And I think lastly, is certainly our link between strategy and culture. We, our strategy has served us well over the last three years with the four pillars in our strategy, helping us to make the right decisions and drive our organization. But the culture then to create an environment where every person that walks through the door on a daily basis are totally authorized to do their best work. Because in this complex environment, I think other than having the right people, is to ensure that they are fully empowered to do their job and do it well. So I think those things might give me a whole lot of confidence that whatever the market brings and however we develop the market, we will be able to play a role in creating a cleaner and a greener future. That's fantastic. But it is a very disruptive market and there are things on the horizon that are going to happen and there are other types of vehicles coming in. But I was quite impressed that there are currently about 80,000 fuel cell electric vehicles on the road in the world and about 1,000 hydrogen refueling stations. But that is not really a big number when you start looking at the world. So what can be done in your view to improve this figure exponentially? So firstly, um, I think one of the biggest stumbling blocks for the hydrogen economy was the concern on our ability to produce green hydrogen Um, economically. Now, with uh, measures like the um, Inflation Reduction Act coming in from the US, with some of the Euro environmental support, we have seen that that debate has broadly gone away now. With that kind of political support, producing green hydrogen economically is done. That box has been ticked. The conversation has now visibly moved on to how do we develop the infrastructure and how do we develop the end use. Now, the reality is the technology exists. There's more than 400 light vehicle models on the market as well. So there's definitely end use available as we speak today. It's now how we set up the system. And in that system, we've seen capital commitment globally. We've seen how many projects has gone through final stage of approval. And that momentum in the hydrogen economy has just now kickstarted and is is really going at pace. And I think, Martin, it's probably important just to note that we only need in the future 10% of the car park to be fuel cell electric vehicles for us to match our current demand sector. And that's not a big portion, right? So as we start to see ICE vehicles slowly coming out, BVs taking their portion and the hydrogen economy developing, I think there's a real world where um, the future is really bright. And I'm not worried about the future for our products at all. So by the end of 2020, there were 700 megawatts of hydrogen electrolysis capacity that had been deployed with about nine gigawatts having passed final investment decision phase globally. And close to a third is platinum-based PGM using PEM technology. What can be done to ensure greater appreciation 
of the benefits that PEM offers so it gets more share of this market? The benefit of PEM as compared to alkaline electrolysis is the fact that because of your PGM component in a PEM electrolysis, because of the catalytic characteristics of our metal, you get the process to stabilize faster at startup and then the efficiency of the process throughout is much higher than an alkaline electrolysis. And when you think specifically PEM matching renewables, and we all know that renewables is cyclic, that is where PEM plays a very specific role, where the efficiency of PEM electrolysis totally surpasses alkaline electrolysis, specifically in the application around renewables, which is, of course, important for green hydrogen production. And turning to South Africa, I feel that far more momentum needs to be given to this Hydrogen Valley project and Project Rainbow. How can this be done to give more momentum in South Africa to a project like the Hydrogen Valley and the Rainbow project? I think, Martin, there's a couple of things that work together here. For starters, ourselves and Sassel are part of the Global Hydrogen Council. And in that council, there's a big drive to advocacy and then also how policy gets shaped and standards around safety and standards for infrastructure development and end use. So a big portion of this is how do we come back from the Hydrogen Council and make that materials available and get Um, that incorporated into the way that we think strategically and also systemically around how we set up South Africa for hydrogen. The second one, you're familiar with the projects, you've just um, commented on it, and there are a couple of that coming together in the Hydrogen Valley. It is how do we find the right level of investment to get that project, because it is an end use, it is a use case that can showcase what hydrogen can look like, and it's in enhancing that kind of end use cases. I think the last thing certainly is to recognize ourselves as amongst three items. The one is the technology that Sassel has. It is unique technology that belongs to South Africa for hydrogen production. Secondly, we've got the biggest resource of PGMs in the world. And how do we use that as a strategic advantage? And then lastly, how do we use the enormous renewable potential that we have as a country I know that's a little bit further out and it feels a little bit more far-fetched, but the reality is we are one of just only five countries who have enough renewable yield to export renewable energy in the form of hydrogen, of course, because that is a meaningful way of transporting um, energy. So in those components, how do we continuously work with government and all our government stakeholders to bring these projects to life? to bring policy and regulation into South Africa that make this more and more possible and then find investments to um, bring this projects to the fore. They talk about 14,000 jobs a year from this, which is not to be sneezed at. Is that, do you think, a credible figure? It is a credible figure, and that is just around the um, the valley. If you consider the the follow-on, benefits of renewables and bringing energy security into the country and energy security will bring more investments. I think, uh, Martin, the the real big picture of of this is how you unlock a broader economy and not only think about hydrogen and renewables in itself. And do you think that at top level and medium level people are realizing this? Or do you think there's not enough focus on it in South Africa? Martin, I think there's a balanced focus on it. I mean, if you think about our Minister of Mines, he is pushing for a just energy transition, right? And it's right. For our, for us as a country, it is right. We need to consider what our people need. We need to consider what our com- country need in the very near term. I think what we shouldn't lose focus on, on how do we take the next step and how do we surpass into a bigger future? So we need to get through the near term and fully supportive that we need to do this in a way that is just. But I think that's also where we need to think of how we leverage the resources available to us to leverage other investment into our country, into our renewables, into our PGM resources, into the technologies that we have. Because as a country, we have a number of pieces that's important for the globe to unlock 
renewable energy and the decarbonisation. So how are we strategic to do that whilst ensuring that the energy transition in country happens in a just way? And, you know, we see Germany has got, with your uh, cooperation and support and also that of other car manufacturers, they've got a taxi business going. And we've got this big taxi business here. Could we not apply it in South Africa? Absolutely. So there's many of these. So the next phase of our market development work, Martin, is certainly to see how do we use some of those use cases and develop use cases for us here in South Africa. But the Hydrogen Valley... And that corridor was part of a use case, right? And has, has that developed? Could I see anything on the Hydrogen Valley at this stage, or is it still to come? It's still to come. It's in project phase, but it, the feasibility done. So it's ready for investment, Martin. That was Crema Media's Mining Weekly, speaking to Natasha Fulyun, the outgoing CEO of Anglo-American Platinum.